let's add a little bit more context and texture into the ISLM uh, framework. Now, if you recall, the ISLM framework looks at the goods market equilibrium, combinations of interest rate and output to give you goods market equilibrium, that's the IS curve, and then the LM curve, which gives you the interest rates and output such that the money market is in equilibrium. Well, there's, a, there's another important market uh, that we need to take in, into account when we talk about macroeconomics uh, to, to provide a more uh, fuller version of this analysis. We want to take a look at the labor market. We want to, for example, think about the full employment level of output. This is the output such that uh, all workers that want to work can. And in, we introduced earlier this idea of a, uh, an aggregate production function, which depends on technology, A, and the capital stock and labor stock. And let's imagine that we've got some full employment level of output that's related to the capital stock, the labor stock, and technology here. So unless we change the capital stock, unless we change the labor stock, unless we change technology, this full employment level of output is given. Now, indeed, the amount of workers can grow. There can be investment in capital. There can be technological changes, which would shift this FE curve. So let's imagine that you had some sort of productivity shock. This is a uh, Let's say it's some positive shock, some technological change that makes the existing capital stock and labor stock more productive. An example of that would be, say, the uh, internet, internet revolution. It's, a, it's a, a new way of doing business which makes the existing capital stock and labor stock more efficient. That, in essence, could shift the, this full employment level of output to the right. Something underlying um, the economy has changed. You could have some sort of negative shock that changes the ability of the economy to produce. If you had a, I mean, I hate to call this a, a productivity shock, um, but you know, if you had a, um, a widespread uh, disease that, that reduced the number of workers in the economy or a war, you know, some, you know, some sort of negative productivity shock, I know that seems kind of Kind of cold and, and uh, analytical, uh, but these could change. You know, something that destroyed your capital stock, destroyed some of your um, your citizens, would certainly reduce the ability of your economy to to produce, and that would uh, result in, a, in a, uh, a reduction in the full employment level of output. So we start to talk about. Uh, really a more general equilibrium outcome with ISLM, we want to take into account this aspect, uh, these productivity shocks, especially when we look at the, the outcome. So we're going to see, for example, um, in a line of macroeconomics thinking of so-called real business cycle analysis, 
they will tend to focus on shocks in these underlying um, aspects that determine output being the, 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 the origins of recessions, of booms, of, of, sci of, of uh, business cycles. Why do we say real? It's because if you have a technological improvement, you know, that's not a sh just a short-term blip. That's, that's, a, that's real. That is long-lasting, uh, as would be the destruction of, um, of your capital stock because of, uh, because of conflict in the, in the country. Anyway, so this is a, uh, an, an, an additional aspect that we're going to be including in some of the more general analysis uh, employing the ISLM.